part 4. Wipe the cliff sensor clean and move the vacuum to a different place. Hi everyone, this is Yong Yao. This is a Xiaomi Vacuum Robot version 1. As you've seen from the intro, it keeps saying error 4, cliff sensor error. Please wipe the cliff sensor clean. And it just doesn't want to go to work. Okay, I noticed one strange thing about this error 4 problem is that if I don't use the vacuum robot for a while, and when I try to use it again, it is as if the error never happened and it just started working again. So, like last night, I tried to put it to test, but uh, it works for a while. Then I charge the battery back to full. This morning, when I try it again, it just doesn't want to work. I hope this is something wrong with the cliff sensor. I've done some research online and uh, some people suggested to put some kind of aluminum foil. I make the aluminum foil cover to cover uh, all those sensors that way. It just doesn't uh, solve the problem. Uh, it still keeps saying error for uh, cliff sensor error. What I did was I actually ordered a replacement part from AliExpress. So these are the cliff sensor. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is to attempt to replace them and hopefully it will solve the problem. If this doesn't solve the problem, then it could be some other problem like the main board is having uh, some fault. Let's do a tear down. Let's remove all the um, roller brush, the cover and keep it to one side. Okay, now. Okay. All right, before I start disassemble it, I thought I want to change up the angle a bit so that you guys can see a bit better of what I'm doing and how I take it apart. Okay, let's start with the side brush. Okay, now there are uh, six screws uh, for the bottom cover. Okay, now once the bottom cover is taken off, this is the battery. Uh, you might want to detach it first. Okay. You don't actually need to take off the views. I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay. What you should do next is to take off all the screws here to remove the front guard. This is the front guard. Okay. Okay, if you can see, this is the latch that is holding the the uh, front bumper guard. So you have to undo the screw so that you have enough gap to lift the clip away from the latch. And then you can remove it. Okay, now let's uh, remove the back cover. Okay, there are three screws on top and uh, four inner screws. For this screw, you need a longer screwdriver. Maybe we start from the front. This is another longer screw screws that uh, we need to remove. So I need to use a longer screwdriver. Okay. Next, the tool. Okay. Let's go all the way around.
Does that look good? It's annoying that it's cool in this cup. Come on. Okay, now I'm in. Lighty. Okay. Now we have two uh, deeper screws. I'm sorry. Actually, this is to remove the top cover from the bottom. Okay, let's put this to one side. Right, I get that. I guess that's all. Okay, the cons of not removing the the wheels are because they have spring. So let's say if you flip over, and it just doesn't want to lay flat. These are the cliff sensor. Okay, the cliff sensor, one pair, and also the side proximity sensor. And another pair here for the right hand side, and also uh, the proximity sensor. Okay, what's interesting is that the right hand set of the sensor, it comes with another side proximity uh, sensor, which doesn't come with the replacement part. So what you what we need to do is to attach uh, the new part to this original part. Right, the first time when I was trying to remove the proximity sensor, it took me quite a while because I don't really know how they uh, latch on and how to remove them. So after the first experience, I guess I, I learned my lesson. Right, there's a latch in between the sensor and the body. What you need to do is to use a flat head screwdriver. You push it away from the body a bit and then use your thumb to push it down. There you go. Same goes for this side. Just be careful not to break any of the parts. Right. Once they are free, <laughs> we can flip it over again and uh, remove the connectors from the main board. What you want to do is bring it out. There's a cable strainer inside. There are a lot of uh, wires going around the robot. So just um, trace back which is the connector. Actually, this is the side uh, cliff sensor connector for the left hand side, and this, uh, this is the right hand side connector. Unfortunately, to remove the side bumper sensor, you have to remove the main board. Luckily, there's only four screws. Okay, carefully leave the bot, the main bot, remove the wires from the holder. This is the front ultrasonic sensor connector, so just remove them. And you might need to remove all the connectors from one side so that you can flip the bot away. Just wiggle them out. Yes, it's easier. There you go. So this is the plastic sheet to prevent shorting of the circuit board and this is the metal shoe. It's a bit rusty. So your goal is to remove the two proximity sensor and also the uh, bumper, the left bumper switch. Three screws actually. There's another tiny one here. I like, I like 
You have to remove the screws because you need to reuse it for the new part. Just to make sure we are replacing the correct part. So this is the left hand sens sensor set. The original one with uh, marker and some studs. The new replacement part doesn't have any. So after removing the original part, uh, it's time to install the new replacement part. Actually, I'm not sure if they are new. Maybe it's original part, but uh, maybe they are used part disassembled from other vacuum robot because I saw some dust and uh, dirt. Slot the sensor back. Uh, make sure you route the wires properly. The small wires go into the groove. And then this bunch of wires go underneath the side bumper sensor. And then and I just have to make sure that the connector will reach the main board position. Now the other proximity sensor. The slanting side face out. Put in the screw for the side bumper switch first. One part of the sensor is done. Let's remove the right hand side sensor. Like this sensor out. Okay, we have to remove this connector because the wire go under underneath the wire. Okay, that's the last connector for this side proximity sensor. As you can see, the, the replacement sensors only have the bumper switch and also two proximity sensors. And finally, it comes with a small connector which you should uh, connect it to the original proximity sensor. So this is the original sensor, this is the replacement one. Wires in the groove, and this one go underneath the brush, uh, the side brush motor wire. Okay, and this is the switch. Okay, in the switch, wires should go in the material the wire has to be wrapped. Actually, the wires will connect Okay, just check and make sure everything is in good position. No wires are in the screw holes for the casing. Okay, looks like this one is in the way. Okay, just have to be careful of the slot because this wire will be in the way of the screw holes. Okay, and uh, remember to reattach, reconnect the front ultrasonic sensor connector. Reinstall the top cover. Let's reattach the battery. Mm -hmm. 
Alright, booting up. Does it work? Error 9. Install the dustbin and the filter. Okay, install the dustbin. Would it work? Starting the cleanup. Paused. Okay, a very good first sign. It doesn't show the error for cliff sensor error anymore. Okay, let's reinstall everything. I always left this out. Oh yeah, one thing. The front bumper cover. Give it a one last try. Error nine. Install the dustbin and the filter. Oh, that's got me. Dustbin installed. Resuming the cleanup. And it doesn't fall off the table, which means the cliff sensor is actually working. Okay, there you go, guys. I hope uh, this helped you if you are in the same situation. But again, um, do it at your own risk. Uh, I took my risk and I think it's worth it. Okay, bye. See you guys next time.